Hi, I'm Jonah with Sweet Honey Code, and today we're going to dive into how to code a custom block for our Shopify theme. So let's get started. First, the suggestion for this theme came from a comment. So I do read your comments down, down below. So let's dive into this. What are custom blocks? Well, custom blocks essentially add additional blocks we may want to use to within our theme. So what I did here is in a previous video, I already done a clone of the Dawn theme, which is a proper way of handling this to create our own little theme. And so I've gone to templates and then to product.json, which I have open here. Perfect. So over in this area, we want what we want to find is where the sections begin and where the blocks section is defined. Since this is a JSON file, it uses the JSON side text to for formatting and we want to follow those rules. So what we want to do is I'm going to scroll down here to where the last block is defined. That way I have a mental marker for where I'm going to be defining mine. So I'm just going to add a comma here and start typing my definition, which will be custom dash block. Of course, you can come up with your own name, but make sure it's one that you will remember. And then we do curly brackets and say what type of it is. So this type is not saying if it's a text uh, block or things like that. This is more of a type in terms of what type of block we will, will we be looking for in our code later on. So I'm just going to call it custom block, just again for example sake. So there we go. We can save that. So now that we started the definition, or at least told, our theme that we are going to have this block, we now need to write the logic code to help this block be discovered and to render any code we need to to our theme. And for today, I'm keeping it very basic, but you can definitely explore other ways and go here. For example, I can go down to block order and say what order this appears, for example. So I can do a comma custom block that way it is appearing in my selection of options in a certain way. Perfect. So now we're going to go to sections and then main dash product dot liquid. This file already has a lot of liquid code. It can get be really hard to find at first, but what you're looking for is no pun intended this for loop. So what a for loop does is it will go through a certain loop depending on the number of items it finds based off of what you tell it. So in this example, we have a for loop that says for block, that's our variable there, in sections.block, we will now tell it what to do. With the case selector of block.type, now we can say what types of blocks are we rendering code for. So this way we're filtering through the for loop a little bit better. And so the type we are looking for is the type we defined here in this box. So now that we know that, I'm going to tell it. Following the same code format here, I'm going to do curly brackets, percentage, the dashes, and put a space here. We're going to do when, single quote, custom dash block. So I am telling it when you see this type that I created, now we're going to do something. So what are we going to do here? Well, first, I'm going to fix the indent there. Perfect. So now we're going to output whatever that code is, if it's HTML, things like that. Because I have an idea how I want to use this field, one of the things I want to take consideration is what happens if the field is blank, if it once it has values, what do we do there? So the first thing I want to do here is with curly brackets and the percentages here, which is liquid code again, I'm going to do an if statement. What I want to look for is if this block has a value. So more specifically, if a user puts some text in here, then it should output it. If it's blank, then it should do nothing. So we're going to do block dot settings dot custom dash block, just like that. So we will be defining an ID for a block later down in the schema, and you'll see that in a moment. But because I have a F block here, I like to make sure it's closed with a percentage and if, which is also a liquid. And so now we want to output this. So paragraph tag here, close our paragraph as well. And then an A tag, 
with quotes and a text here, view collection. So I'm just going to play with an idea of that a user who commented gave me, which is having a text field that goes to a collection that they type the name for. So in this case, I'm going to hook into the URL by using collections like that. And then we're going to do double curly brackets. So what this does is this will output the value from this block specifically. So this is, again, more liquid code here. And so we're going to do block dot settings dot custom dash block. So we will output that value that is set there and it's being attached. Make sure there's no spaces at least before these curly brackets. Okay to space in here. It will ignore that. So if all works, this block will only display if there is value there. So now we just want to go down to the schema, which is at the very bottom of this theme. So this is another reason why I encourage offline coding. That way you can save and test your features that way. So I already have place text for here, but I'm going to talk through it. So first, in this case for schema, so we look for this tag called schema there is going to be a blocks array. So you're going to notice that in some areas, they there may not be an array, but in other areas there are. And that can get a little confusing. Do your best to follow the format there. But the same thing happens. We have to start our definition for the block between curly brackets here this time. So we first do the initial curly brackets here, separated by a comma. Then we can begin by typing in type. So we are now telling it what block type this schema attaches to. So that type we defined here is being used again here just to link everything together. Then we have a name. So this is a text name that's displayed to anyone who uses this theme. At some point, we would want to look at the language schema that's available in themes so that we can actually do proper language translations for now. But I would want to note that in my developer to do list. Here we have a settings also an array. So we have settings, colon, and array here. So in this array block as well, encapsulated by curly brackets. This time, the type here for settings is what type of block are we presenting to the user? So in this instance, I'm just going to use a single line in text. But for example, if I want the rich text, I would just type in here rich text. And there will be a link in the description so you can explore other types to experiment with as well. And this time, the ID. So this was the ID that I was calling at or calling with up above in the code where I did block dot settings dot custom dash block. So in that case, I was telling liquid look for this block ID and output its content. The last thing that is also rec mandatory is a label. So this label should be some sort of instructions or why is this input box here? Basically, again, at a future point in our development, we will need to also create a language definition for this. So that way it can be translated to other languages as well. But this is OK for at least a starter point. So once everything looks good for us, I'm going to do Control S. And I'm going to use Shopify CLI here to do Shopify theme serve. So what this does is it will sync up a development version of this theme to my shop, which I already logged into uh, before starting this recording. Perfect. It gives me a link here. Hold down Control click. Wait for it to load. There we go. So this is my new theme I'm working on. Let's go to catalog. Click on a product here. You are going to see it because I did a test run video. But where do we find this block? It will be under product information. For all intents and purposes, I'm going to remove this for a moment here. Click save. So now if I go to add block, I can see this new custom block I created. Click on it. Shows up as a single line text field. I can even add a dynamic single line text meta field here. I can see that it's appearing correctly. But just to make sure that the text is working as it should, I'm going to type mugs because I know I have a collection here that's named that. Hover over my collections here, click to test on it, and it does go to the mugs collection. Perfect. That works. I'm going to backspace there. So the only thing is this link is appearing even with it being blank. And 
To me, that's not a good method because if there's nothing there, I mean, it's going to take you to the catch-all collections main area for sure. Let's not present information to a user with an expectation that's going to take them somewhere, especially when it says view collection. This sounds very specific. So I'm going to go back to my code here, go back up to where I was outputting this value. So I'm going to scroll on up above here. There we are. So it's rendering no matter what. So we're going to do a does not equal blank. Save. As soon as we save, sometimes it catches the sync. There's been a slight issue, at least with my setup. I'm not sure why. But now that I've saved a change, it should catch it. If not, I can do Control S, serve it one more time. I may have to refresh and re-add that block, which is perfectly fine. This is a development version. And like I said, for some reason, the syncing is not working like it should on my setup here. So I'm going to go back to product information here. There's my custom block. So if I type mugs, it should appear. There we go. If there's no mugs in there, then it disappears. So that is working as intended, which is perfect. So now I'm going to just add that code in here. So at any time I decide to fill in this field, that code's going to display for me. So this concludes this code tutorial on how to add a custom block to a Shopify theme. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you with this process. There is more to this than meets the eye for sure, which is why I'll have a link to resources down in the description. And if you like this video, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.